Trey Young versus Luka Doncic, the Hawks versus the Mavs. We just saw these two teams match up a couple weeks ago, and now they matched up again tonight, Wednesday, February 10th, and Luka got the upper hand once again. What's up, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. If you're new here, click that like and subscribe button down below. We come back every night to break down the NBA games each and every night and kind of give you my thoughts and takeaways. And the one game I was focused on was Luka versus Trey Young. I mean, the Hawks versus the Mavs, both are up and coming young teams. And I'll just talk about the end of this game as the, the Mavs squeak away with a one point win, 118 to 117. Trey Young did his thing. So did Luka with another triple double, but this came down to maturity. And ultimately this Mavs team is more mature than the Hawks team at the moment. The Hawks are really, really young with Herter. They got John Collins, even Capella's pretty young. And then they threw in Danilo at the end of the game. And if you were watching, you saw Trey Young flop on the last play. So I guess to take a step back, the Hawks had a chance to win this game. Four seconds left. They had the ball inbounding it from half court and they run a play. Trey Young sets a pick. I assume to kind of come off of it and get the ball, but instead he flops uh, against Willie Cauley Stein, which Trey Young has to know you can't flop in the last five seconds of the game. That's they're never going to call it unless it's blatant, like they truck you or they do something that's so obvious that they have to call it. They're never going to call this. And it was not even a foul when you looked at it. But anyways, Trey Young flops, falls down, and then they're stuck. The Hawks players are all looking around like, well, what do we do now? He was supposed to get the ball. So they inbound it to Danilo Gallinari. He takes a couple dribbles, left left wing fadeaway. Of course, it's not going to go in. It's, it's fudging Danilo Gallinari. He, he ain't built like that. So the Mavs get the one-point victory. And this is just a lesson of maturity. The Hawks are going to be fine going forward. You know... Trey Young has to know in those situations that they're not going to give him that call. He needs to play through the contact and go get the ball and try to win the game for his team. I mean, if you were watching the game, he was making logo threes every single possession. It seemed like he couldn't miss from there. But again, tonight was just a lesson of maturity. This Hawks team will be fine. I still think they will make the playoffs coming, coming up. As for the Mavs team, they're a very interesting team to watch. They had a five or six game losing streak earlier in the season, maybe two to three weeks ago, and now they're starting to kick it back into gear, but Kristaps Porzingis still isn't playing too well. He was one of our NBA player props that we bet on, and if you don't know, call on our shot. We do an article every single day, every morning, where we give you our three NBA player props that we're betting on. Check that out on our website. But anyways, yeah, Kristaps hasn't played too well. Maxi Kleber is back from injury. So is Dwight Powell. Then you got Willie Cauley-Stein. Tim Hardaway Jr. has stretches where he can't miss. Jalen Brunson has looked good. Josh Richardson has been up and down all year. And then you got Luka, who's kind of trying to mold everything together and just have them all mesh and win some games. I, You know, they're going to be all right. As a Knicks fan, I'm hoping that they lose a bunch more games so that we get their pick and that it's a good pick. But as a, also as a Knicks fan and a pessimist and a diehard Knicks fan, you know nothing good happens for the New York Knicks. I don't care where the Mavs are. They are never going to get up a high pick. It's just, we aren't that lucky. But Mavs will be fine. They're starting to string together some wins in a tough Western Conference. And I expect them to kind of keep winning some games behind Luka and his triple-double antics. The man's a beast. Uh, the only other games really that I want to break down, are we going to talk about this Pacers versus the Nets? And I could talk about this for a whole single video. But what is wrong with the Pacers? And maybe I'll break that down tomorrow or later this week. The Pacers are really in a slump recently. And I think it has to go back to Karis Lever. And it's not his fault that he's out. But they're really missing missing him creating shots for the team. Right now they're stuck to Sabonis and Malcolm Brogdon. And Sabonis is in a big, big slump. Tonight he was 7 for 20. There's two or three games prior to that. He was 10 for 32. He's slumping. He was visibly frustrated towards the end of this game. He looked like after Kyrie Irving stripped him at the end of the game, he just looked done. He looked like he told the coaching staff, I'm done. I'm not playing anymore after they were down by 20, 15 to 20. Props to them for fighting back. TJ McConnell, 13 points. He's been playing very well recently, but they're just lacking a second score or a third score for this team, which Karis LeVert would be that. Hopefully he gets, gets well soon. He returned to Brooklyn tonight, got to say hi to all his ex-teammates. Hopefully he's back soon because they desperately, desperately need him. Not that Oladipo was great for them back a couple weeks ago pre-trade, but he was still another scorer that was a threat. Right now they're starting 
You know, we got Justin Holiday. He's not going to score 20 points a night. Not going to happen. Jeremy Lamb, he's been good this year, but he's still coming back from an injury. A major, major injury and Achilles tear. Not going to do it. And then Doug McDermott, up and down. What can you do there? And then the last game that's just finished, we had the Raptors versus Wizards earlier. Norm Powell continues to get it done. Wizards don't play an ounce of defense. I forget the stat. I think they're 2-13 and 13 with Russell Westbrook in the lineup and 4-3 and three without Russell Westbrook. Very interesting. Not 100% Russell Westbrook's fault, but he continues to struggle all year like he kind of has. He seems to be back healthy, but 23 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists. Bradley Beal didn't play too well tonight, but... You know, the Rockets or the the Raptors are good at defense, at least somewhat. Chris Boucher, big game. Shout out to him. Uh, Bobby Boucher, that's what I like to call him. 17 and 16. Big, big game for him. Raptors coasted to an easy win. And the only other game that has finished is the Hornets versus the Grizzlies. Grizzlies coast to an easy victory. Lamelo, 17 points, 8 for 15. Good for him. Terry Rozier, 34. One of those games where he just he has a flamethrower and he can't miss. Grizzlies, another big team effort. I mean, you got Kyle Anderson, 27 points. Jonas Valanciunas, 12. Dylan Brooks, 20. Desmond Bain, who has been very good for them as a rookie, 18. John Morant, 15. Grayson Allen, 18. Tyus Jones, or, yeah, uh, Trey, yeah, Tyus Jones with another 12. Grizzlies are a well-rounded team. I don't think that will work come playoff time, so they're going to need to get Jaron Jackson Jr. back. And ultimately, when you get to the playoffs, it seems like you need some primary scorers and it normally isn't team basketball that ends up winning that time, that kind of stretch of the season. But we'll see. I love watching the Grizzlies. They were my surprise team going into the year. John Morant's injury kind of set them back, but they're still a surprise team. I mean, what? I mean, they're 9-10 and 10 right now, but they've been winning some close games, and I think they're going to start going on a hot streak once they get fully healthy. And that'll do it. There's some other games that are just kind of wrapping up. Clippers are getting a win over the Timberwolves. Not a surprise there. Pelicans versus the Bulls are in a... Absolute, uh, they, uh, no team is playing defense and they're 74 to 70. They just got into the third quarter. Yeah, I, I don't know. They're just at, out there getting shooting practice, I guess. Lonzo Ball's having a career stretch of his of his uh, NBA career. He's shooting the ball lights out, which is not what I would expect for him. He took it personal when I put him on my worst starting lineup team. And now he said, I bet. And then you got the Cavaliers versus Nuggets. Nuggets are blowing out the Cavs. And that'll do it. Uh, this has been Austin from Calling Our Shot. Check out our website at callingourshot.com, as well as follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, at Calling Our Shot. I'll be back tomorrow to break down some more hoops. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.